Hey guys, welcome back. I'll bet you're here because you are looking to figure out how to clean your 498170 Briggs & Stratton carburetor. Either that or you came here from a link from uh, the video on this particular mower, which is a free mower. Either way, I'm going to show you how to clean this carburetor in detail. Incidentally, all of these screws I'm taking out are 5 16 inch. That's, uh, that's the socket you need to take those out. So once you take all of those out, you should be able to pull this plate off like that, and you have full access to the carburetor. This uh, lawn lawnmower does not have any gas in the tank. Um, so I don't need to pinch off the fuel line, but if it does, you can use a hemostats or a small vice grips like that to pinch the fuel line so you don't get too much fuel all over the place. Uh, some people, maybe not you, but maybe somebody close to you may not like it if there's gasoline all over the garage floor. So right now, I am going to take off the carburetor using a 3 8 inch socket. I loosen those up. I'm just going to put this on my drill and buzz these off. Like that. And I use a magnetic, magnetic part holder like this to keep all of my screws from wandering away while I'm working. So uh, at this point, you know, uh, it's a good idea. I think I'm going to take the fuel line off. Um, in this particular case, uh, this, this has already been off, so I'm just going to pull it off from the tank over here like that. Whoa! You know what? <laughs> this tank wasn't quite empty. And uh, yeah, let me clean that up. I'll be back. On careful reconsideration of the situation, I think I'm going to take it off from this side. I put the uh, two three-eighths inch uh, screws back in there to kind of hold it. I'm going to pinch off that fuel line and uh, I'm, then I'm going to get the right tool and be back because I'm not prepared. Got my line pliers. You know how in school sometimes they would, part of your grade would be based on whether you were prepared or not? Well, I think I would have not passed to that particular, or not gotten a very good grade on that at this point. So let me take these screws back out, like so. There we go. Come on. Out. Out. Now, all that's left is to get the carburetor off of the governor arm, which is a little Z-bend. You just pull it down and turn it, and it comes right out like that. And look at the ickiness we've got going on inside this carb. Why don't we get into it? I am on the table I usually film carb cleans on and uh, it's about 20 minutes later because I had to clean off all the crap from my previous project which is the DR field and brush bearing replacement. Um, yeah, I did not, uh, uh, first thing you want to do is clean this off. I did uh, clean off the outside so all this crap doesn't get inside. Um, yeah, I didn't put anything away from that carb clean or from that bearing replacement and so I had to clean it all off for you guys. Uh, that's something usually we learn in preschool. I think my daughter, at uh, my son even, he's like two, they learned that at the, their, his little gym. It's like, uh, it's time to put the toys away, toys away, right? Oh, 
Let me see if I can get this molasses out of here. Um, I'm going to try and not mess with this gasket because I don't have a replacement. But um, yeah, it should be, uh, for me, it should be like, uh, it's time to put the tools away, tools away, tools away. Time to put the tools away in the toolbox, right? Need to sing that song every time. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and open it up with my favorite wrench. It's a half inch offset box wrench. Now if you've seen the previous, or if you saw the video of this uh, lawnmower um, that this is coming off of, you'll see that I already took this card bowl off. Um, I'll, I'll put a link in the upper right hand corner um, so that you can see that. Let that soak in there. So yeah, that's pretty nasty. You can see that the float has uh, it looks like varnish slag stalactites growing off of it. So let's put this in the uh, soup. Ooh. All right. I'm not prepared again. All right. If yours is uh, if your pin is being resistant like mine is, you can get a uh, I'll put it down here. You can get a little 16th inch punch like that. You can put this in a vise if you have it, or uh, if you're like me and too lazy to go to the vise, put it on the table and tap it out. There we go. Just like that. Put that in the soup to uh, emulsify. Oh, okay. Kind of stuck here. So this needle is stuck. And ah, I am prepared. I have a small screwdriver. I'm gonna try and just work this out. Just like that. Or can you see that? Yes, you can. So I kind of just pried up very gently like that and I got it out of there. Ooh, actually doesn't look too bad. It's not scored or anything like that. I think we ought to be able to reuse that needle. Put that in there, put that in there, let those stalactites kind of dissolve. There's a uh, I think there's been uh, there's white dust in here. It's actually kind of crystalline. Can you see the the sparkle to it? That's the uh, that's ethanol. Ethanol does that. Um, so if you let ethanol fuel sit in here, so maybe that's why you're here. You let your fuel sit in your carb over the winter, and now it won't start. So and blow out the emulsion tubes, all of this stuff really not much to these carbs there's um there's a few passages to that you, you gotta you know be concerned with but generally generally these things are pretty simple so all right uh, I'll let you watch. I'm probably going to fast forward this section um, as I clean this stuff off. Hmm. I don't know. You know what? I might just take a wire brush and just kind of try and get some of this crust off of here. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'll work on that. I'll spray it off. I'll use the pa paper towels, try and get it as clean as I can, and then uh, I'll be back. All right. That's about all I'm going to do. Um, if you have a kit, uh, which many of you will, I'll put a link in the description below um, to the part number for the kit and the part number, obviously, to this carburetor, probably how you found this video. Um, that Your kit will come with a new o-ring, um, a new 
gasket here, a new sealing O-ring for the intake pipe on the engine. Um, it will probably come with a new uh, kind of filter foam thing for the butterfly. You can take the butterfly out, you can just grab it with a, a plier and pull, and it should come right out. Um, what else would your kit come with? It, it would come with a new gasket for the um, jet, main jet. Uh, it may even come with a needle and seat. Um, but in any case, uh, it's not a bad idea to, to buy a kit for sure. Um, it can only help you. All right, let's see if I can get some of this crust out of here. So this stuff is actually is as hard as a rock in here, uh, dried varnish. So I'm gonna put some WD-40 in there and take some emery cloth. And I think it's, what is this? Thousand grit. And I'm just going to run it around in here and uh, sand off all of this varnish. Good enough. I don't want to sand it too much. Um, if you don't have to at all, I wouldn't because these things have a anti-corrosion coating in there from the factory. And if you don't need to mess with it, I wouldn't. If you can just wipe it off, that would be much better. Um, anyway, this carb is in pretty bad condition, so... And even soaking in that, this soaking in carb cleaner, this thing isn't, man, I don't know how long this stuff was in there, but it's uh, pretty well cemented on all of these parts. I think that this needle looks pretty good. Uh, the sealing surface is really what I'm, I'm concerned about here. You know, it, it's not scored or anything. It looks very good. All cleaned up. The varnish was really on this float, uh, stuck really hard. Um, I cleaned it off as best I could. Um, I could put it in an ultrasonic cleaner, but again, this thing floats, so I'm not really sure how much, uh, how clean it would have gotten. I let it soak in some mineral spirits over here and the carb cleaner. Um, in any case, it's uh, it's a float. It still floats. It'll function regardless of how it looks. It's more about functionality than the, the looks at this point with a carb like this. So that brings us to the most important piece of the entire assembly, which is the, the bull nut. Uh, and that also serves as the main jet. In here, there is a very tiny hole, which is the main jet. It picks up fuel from two small holes on either side which are both completely plugged up on this one and um, basically that draws the fuel up from the sides and the vent venturi effect from the engine the air going by in the intake uh, creates low pressure and uh, pushes I guess pulls pushes the um, gasoline up through the, the jet and the, or the size of the jet is what meters how much fuel goes into the engine. So uh, let's start by poking out these holes and for that let me see let me go get something for that. I have this uh, I think it's a motorcycle carburetor jet cleaning kit um, I ordered it on eBay. It's shipped uh, like directly from China. I think the whole thing was like two dollars and fifty cents. But these, some of these smaller ones are are good for cleaning out the the side side jets here. Um, so crusty. I'm gonna. I gotta see if I gotta find them for. Oh, here's here's one. There. There's one. It should go to there to the other side. There we go. That's good. All right. So that's clear. I wonder if the smallest one in here. I think it's which one? I think it's this one. I wonder if that will go down this jet. Oh, it does. Aha. Uh -huh. That's good. I was under the impression, well, I guess for some some jets, like uh, on, I think I tried this first on a Tecumseh last year, and it did not work. 
This one was still too big to get through the jet, but this Briggs and Stratton actually gets through it okay. Alright, so we poked out all of these orifices. I hope you're paying close attention because this is the whole reason why most of these mowers do not run. It is this jet right here becoming clogged. There's really not much else to the carburetor except this. Something else I like about this kit is if you notice that these um, pokers, they're kind of have a, um, they're kind of rough, almost file-like on the sides. And that's so that when you put it through, you can actually abrasively clean out, or more aggressively clean out some of this, this crust, this buildup, this hard buildup, um, because and that that's kind of important. Unfortunately, this one doesn't really go deep enough to do it. But unfortunately, um, when you get buildup like that in in the jet, it kind of even if you clear the center of it, unless you get the whole thing clear, it's going to still restrict the the fuel flow somewhat, and you may end up with a lean condition. It may end up actually um, surging, um, or or you know not quite running right. Um, some people will take a small micro drill bit set and kind of ream it out to the you know the the proper size or maybe one size bigger than what it uh, what goes through it naturally. I'm usually not under that. Uh, I usually don't do that, but I do see a lot of like dust coming out of here, so. I'm going to try and open this up as much as I can. I can't stress how important this jet is, getting this completely clean, free of any obstructions, because it's not going to run right if you don't. Okay? There. That's good. That's what you want to see. Very nice. First thing, first things first, we take our float and our jet or no, sorry not jet needle stick it in like that okay and then we carefully slide that down hole like that and slide our back in. Still a lot of resistance. There's still a lot of crust on this. But as long as it's free, it should be okay. This one is... No, I don't think this is going to work. Yeah, I don't like how this float is sitting. It should be sitting more like that than like that. Um, I think it has to do with the needle, or not the needle, the seat. And so I'm going to try and get the seat out without damaging it and uh, take a look. I don't think this is going to happen. It's already getting destroyed. Looks like I really tore it up. Let me see if I can get a wood screw or something. All right, I have a wood screw here. I'm just going to screw this in. No, it's, uh, it's actually really brittle and Uh, crumbly. Let's see if I can show you. Yeah, see, it's just pieces are coming out. Yeah, this thing needed to be replaced. Let me dig that out. Oh, so I'm just going to use some um, picks and things like that to dig it out of there. Bring it back. I went through all my carb kits and partial carb kits, and I have found a needle and seat to uh, a uh, Briggs and Stratton carburetor that should work. So. All I really need is the seat here, so...
so why don't I get the seat, stick it in, and we will see how that float sits now. So when you put this in, there is a uh, side that has some grooves in it, and that side goes down. Look at that. So what I find works really well is a 3 16ths inch punch, 3 16ths, fits right there and don't be afraid to really squash it in there and get it seated properly because you want it to seal really well. So that's that. Let's see how I'm going to stick this needle back on this still rather crusty float and see how that sits. Where is my um where did my pin go? Where is the pin? Lost the pin. Found the pin. Pin goes through just like that. Oh that's much better. That's sitting just just right. Perfect. Good. I like it. Okay, let's put the bowl back on. And yeah, hopefully that makes good enough contact with the um, the O-ring here so it doesn't leak. Yeah, maybe. Tell you what, this is definitely one of the nastier carbs I have cleaned. Um, I don't come across too many that are really this this crusty. Um, occasionally, but not not that often. But you know what? I'll tell you something. As long as this jet, as long as the orifices in this jet are clean and the needle and seat are working properly, you know, the float is working properly, it, it should work just fine. So, there we go, back together, and let me show you how to test it. So, I stick a relatively clean piece of fuel line onto the uh, fuel inlet, and then in the down position like this when you're holding the, the carburetor level, uh, right side up, you should be able to blow through it. Um, you know, the needle and seat, the float should be down and um, it should be able to let gas in. And sure enough, it does. When you turn it upside down, that float uh, should put push the needle back up to the seat and you should not be able to blow through it anymore. It should be uh, blocking it off. And it is. So this carb is working properly. Let me go um, put this fuel hose away so it doesn't get all nasty. I, I don't, I don't, personal preference, I don't like blowing on a, a nasty, uh, nasty fuel hose. Anyway, let's go um, put this back on the mower and see if it works. Hey guys, I want to thank you for joining me on this video. I hope you found this carb clean informative and entertaining. And if you want to see the, the final result, if you want to see the uh, mower that this goes on, if you want to see it run, um, there should be a link up in the upper, left, uh, upper right hand corner uh, to that video. Check it out. And if you like these videos, as always, uh, please uh, thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, you know, all of that. Should be a subscribe button down there. Hit that. Alright, thanks guys.